Hi everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. This video has been sparked by one of the comments I received on one of the videos where I was showing you the installation of large language models locally. The question was very much relevant as it was coming from someone who is just starting out in AI and the person was wondering as once we go to the model card of a hugging face model, what exactly is meant by all of these files? So in this video, I am going to explain each one of these files in as simple words as possible. In fact, I'm just going to explain this whole page, which is related to this Llama 3.2, 3 billion instruct model. But you can, of course, go to any model page on Hugging Face and more or less it will be similar. And if you don't know how to do that, just click on this model on the top and then you will see that there are thousands of models already hosted on Hugging Face, maybe hundreds of thousands now. So if you just open any model, it should be similar one way or another. Going back to our this model card, now let's try to decipher and dissect and try to understand in as simple words as what exactly is meant by this page. So this is a model card which provides an overview of the model including its architecture, performance benchmarks, license and other relevant details. The most important part here is this files and version, the middle tab. The third tab is where you can ask questions, you can, uh, and this is where the model creator gives a lot of updates as um, what exactly is happening. There are also some closed issues. So model is hosted just like if you have seen the GitHub repo where you can raise issues, you can ask questions and that sort of stuff. One of the problem is that I don't see that this gets updated as much as it should be. So don't expect the answer immediately or at all for most of the model providers, I believe. Anyway, the first step model card is just a readme file and you can find all the related files here in files and version. And that is the main, I would say, focus of this video. So this section contains the actual model files. Let's break down each file's purpose. So I will just simply start from the top. If you see there is a original folder. In this original folder, there is PyTorch format of the model. Not only it comes in PyTorch, but also it comes in safe tensor, as you can see here. And that is primarily what we use in order to do the inference. And I will explain it shortly, what exactly is meant by that. The next file in the sequence is this dot git attribute. It is a standard configuration file from the git that tells git how to handle specific files or directories in a repository. It defines attributes such as line endings, merge strategies and more. And you can also include a lot of ignore statements here. So this is related to, um, for example, I would say different packages and different stuff you use within the GitHub repo. And now in summary, if you look at this content, so in this case, this dot git attribute file is configuring git to use large file storage or LFS for various file types, including archives, models, and data files. LFS is used to efficiently store and manage large files in a repository because mod model files are large. And this file is specifying that LFS should be used for filtering, diffing, and also merging these file types. Okay, let's go back. I'm just clicking on this files and versions. And then the next important file is here is license.txt. As the name suggests, this is a licensing file, which describe all the licensing of this model. Now, if you are looking to use it in production environment, it is extremely important to read and understand this file so that you don't violate the licensing. And I cannot stress it enough. Don't take it easy because some companies are pretty precious about their licensing. And if they find out that you are using the model without permission and you're violating the license, the legal penalties could be very high, especially in Europe. So make sure that you are aware of it. Okay. So now we know what that is. And then we have this readme.txt. It is in the markdown format. So the first file, which you see here, 
this is what this readme file is in this first model card and you can also open it and check it out it will all be the markdown format here okay let's go back and then we have this use policy this is um and this is not the standard not every model has all of these files some some of them just combine this with the licensing but llama has this acceptable use policies as where you can use this that model and where you cannot use this model it is also important to read okay and then we have some of the technical files starting from config.json now if i click on this config.json let me explain what is happening in this file so this file contains metadata about the model's architecture including layer activations layer activations means mathematical functions that introduce non linearity into the model sizes vocabulary size vocabulary size means the number of unique words or tokens in the mo model's vocabulary and the number of attention heads which is a mechanism that allows the model to focus on specific parts of the input data and the model precision which is a numerical precision used to represent the model's weights and activations the transformer library uh, uses this whole config.json file to build the model architecture once we download it so pretty important file i would say then we have this generation underscore config.json now this is similar to what we just saw above but this is more related to i would say the inference this file contains metadata for inference inference simply means the process of using a model to generate output for new unseen input data now this contains things like temperature and top p top k thresholds which control the output and i already have covered it in a lot of videos on my channel now you can also specify context window size which is the amount of input data the model considers when generating output and token ids for special tokens okay let's go back and then we have these safe tensor files before i tell you about them let me also quickly introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are igentbot igentbot lets you effortlessly deploy a personalized knowledge bot across platforms like discord slack and others it is ideal for open source tech communities and startups that provide user support and i will drop the link to their website in video's description okay let's go back here so now we have at this safe tensor files what exactly these are now in short these are the model weights so due to the large size of llm which could be billions of param parameters the model weights are split into smaller files for safe downloading so you see we have two safe tensors here these files come in either dot bin or dot safe tensor format by the way safe tensor is a newer more secure format proposed by hugging face as an alternative to the default pytorch format because there are some security vulnerabilities when it comes to pytorch format okay then we have model safe tensor index.json if i just open this file now this file stores a sequential map of the model's architecture specifying which part file each layer's weights are stored in layer is simply a component of model that processes input data through a set of mathematical operations allowing the network to learn complex patterns and a weight is a numerical value that determines the strength of connection between two neurons in the model that influences how much each neuron's output contributes to the next layer input so this is what con contains that very important file by the way for the inner workings of the model and then we have something this special token map let me open it now <clears throat> So again this file is re related to the tokenizer and tokenizer is a component of a model that breaks down input text into individual tokens or words so this contains like beginning of sentence end of sentence so that the model would know when a sentence is beginning or ending and then going forward we have again this tokenizer.json file again to it's it contains the whole tokenizer so it can uh, similar to other file it contains the whole uh, tokenizer and it also gets information from this special token file 
and this tokenizer config dot json this contains the tokenizer class name layer names input processing configuration and all the related information to the token which is required for it to work properly let's go back to the files and versions and these are all the files which we uh, normally get in a model there are some specific models in image or in other where we also find some other files like for example if you go to a model like flux dev which is a text to image model you might get some um, text encoders you might get some vae files which are the variational auto encoder to convert our image from latent space to pixel space so and i already have covered that on the channel so if you encounter any file just search it on the channel you should be able to find a video around it if not let me know happy to cover it for you but overall these are the major standard files which we use i hope that this was useful if you still have any questions feel free to ask if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching